Today we're going to take a look at how we can create a simple conveyor belt in Phaser 3 by using the built-in arcade physics. By using the built-in Phaser 3 game objects for our sprites and our tile sprites, sprinkling in a few animations, adding in some basic collision detection by using the built-in physics, we can create this example you see here. So in this example, we can move our player around our scene, and once our player gets on top of our conveyor belt, we can automatically move our player forward based on the speed of the conveyor belt. Likewise, if our player is moving against the conveyor belt, we can slow them down, or when they're moving with it, it'll go ahead and speed them up. So before we get started, there will be a link in the description of this video to the source code for this example, as well as a link to the starter code if you'd like to follow along. In this example here, we are using Phaser 3.80. Older versions of Phaser may work with this example, but it is recommended to at least be on this version. So if you'd like to follow along, go ahead and grab the starting code, extract the code, and go ahead and open it in your favorite ID of choice. Let's get started. Before we dive into the code, we are quickly going to go over the starter code in the project template. So in the project template, there will be a readme that will have a link to the live example, as well as details on how to set up and run this uh, template locally. And so if you go ahead and install your dependencies and run the project, you should see this example here. And so what we've done so far is we created a basic Phaser 3 game instance with a simple level where we can go ahead and move our player character around our level. And so when we press the left or right keys, our character will move in that direction and we'll update our player's velocity because uh, we've already enabled physics. So then that way they can go ahead and move around the level. All right, so back to our code. Uh, our public folder is going to have all of the assets we'll be using for this example. Our source folder will have all of our code that will be used. And then our index.html page, this is going to be our main web application that references our source.main.ts file. And so that's going to be our entry point to create our game. If we jump over there real quick. What we're doing is at the bottom of the file, we're creating our phaser 3 game configuration. And so we're just specifying our game properties. All right, and then we go ahead and we define our physics. And so for our example, we're using the built-in arcade physics uh, in this example. Example. And so real quick, we can go ahead and turn on debug as we can see that in our game. Also in this file is a basic uh, phaser scene class. And so inside here, uh, inside our preload method, we're just loading in all the assets we'll be using for this example. Uh, so we have a, an image and a couple sprite sheets and with their configuration. Then in our create method, uh, once we get here, we go ahead and add our background to our game. And then we go ahead and create an invisible floor. So back in our example, this is how our player is actually able to move across our level is with this invisible floor here. And so we can see our outline. And so with that floor, so we make sure it doesn't fall, we go ahead and enable physics and we make it uh, immovable. Then we go ahead and create two instances of a belt class and a player class. So in our player class, this is where we go ahead and create our main player. And so we go ahead and create our sprite. Uh, we go ahead and update it to have collisions with that floor. And then we go ahead and add in our input and our animations. And so uh, basically what we're doing down in our update method, we're just checking to see if our left or right key is pressed. If it is, we're updating our player's velocity. And we're also flipping a few properties if we need to face the other direction. And then we're going to go ahead and play a few animations depending on what key is pressed. Uh, with a default for idle. At the bottom of the file, we just go ahead and create our animations. And so then that's why our player's animated uh, in our example. So then finally we have our belt class. And so right now this class isn't doing a whole lot. Uh, we have an empty method for creating our sprites for our conveyor belt. But then we went ahead and already set up our animations. So then that way we don't have to focus on that uh, in this example. So now we finished reviewing our project template, we're gonna go ahead and start coding. And so the first thing we're going to do is in our belt class, we're going to go ahead and actually create our game objects so we can actually see our conveyor belt in our game. And so our conveyor belt is going to be made up of multiple uh, game objects. And so what we're going to have is we're going to go ahead and have a starting piece that'll be this here. We'll have this ending piece. Then we're going to use a tile sprite to fill in this gap here. So in our assets, if we take a look at our belt.png file, we'll see that our sprite sheet here has those components. And so we see we have our left side, our right side, and then our middle pieces to go ahead and fill that in. And then by playing those frames, that's how we create that nice animation we see here. All right, so to make it easier to work with our game objects, we're gonna go ahead and create a container to place all of them inside. So what we'll do is in our belt class, we're gonna go ahead and add a new property. And we're just gonna call this belt sprite container. And this is going to be our phaser game objects container. And then while we're here, we're gonna go ahead and add a few more properties. And so we're gonna go ahead and do mid, sprite we'll have a phaser game objects and this is going to be a sprite and then we're going to go ahead and add one more and this is going to be a mid tile sprite this will be a game objects and this will be tile sprite and we'll come back to these two properties later uh, after we create our initial game objects uh, but then that way we'll have them here for reference because we will need them 
All right, so the first thing we do is let's go ahead and create that container. Uh, so what we'll do is before we go ahead and create our sprites, uh, we'll go ahead and create that. So we're going to do this. We'll do our belt sprite containers going to equal to our scene that is provided. We want to use our add method, and then we want to go ahead and do a container. So for our position, we're going to do 96 for our X. We'll do 192 for our Y, and we're going to have no child game objects when we create this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and call the set size method. And so for physics to work properly, uh, our container initially has no size. And so we need to go ahead and specify that size if we're going to go ahead and use things like an overlap or a collider. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to specify our width and our height of what we want this to be. And so with our container, we want to go ahead and enable it for physics. And so to do that, we're going to go ahead and do our scene. We're going to do physics. We're going to do our world, enable, and we're going to go ahead and reference our belt sprite container. All right, so we go ahead and save. What we should see now in our scene is we can see that our container is added, but it automatically starts falling because we have that gravity applied for our physics. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and disable gravity on this game object, and we want to make it so it's immovable. So what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and reference our container, and we need to go ahead and grab the body property uh, from our container. And so for our, we're going to go ahead and type this as a phaser physics arcade dot body. And the reason we're doing this is when we reference our body property on our game object, it can be one of multiple types. And we know because we just enabled physics, we're going to go ahead and have a physics arcade body right now. And by doing that, that's going to allow our IntelliSense to have the properties and our methods that we know that exist on this body type. And so for our arcade physics body type, what we want to go ahead and do is set a movable. And we're going to go ahead and set that to true. And then we want to go ahead and set allow gravity. And we're going to go ahead and set that equal to false. So now when we do that, when our scene refreshes, we can see our container is added. However, it's not in the position that we're expecting. And so what happens is when we add in our container and we enable that size in our body, uh, we have our central position of our container in that starting position that we specified here. So our 96 and 192. And so now we need to go ahead and update the actual body and we need to give it an offset. And so to do that, we can go ahead and use the set offset method. And so we're just going to do set offset. And we can go ahead and specify our position. So we're going to do 176, and then we'll go ahead and do 7. All right, so what we did here is we went ahead and set our offset. What we did is we took our, our size that we set, and we divided it by 2, so then that way we can move it halfway over. So then that would be in the position that we want it to be in. For our Y offset, we didn't go ahead and cut this in half. Uh, what we did is we just gave it a little bit of difference, so then that way it's a little bit above our floor. And the reason for that is once our player is over our conveyor belt, we need to know when these two are touching. And so if this is below our floor, uh, our player's body might not actually overlap with it. And because our player is not actually going to collide with this, we're just going to check for an overlap. We can have that overlap exist like this and get the effect that we will want. That'll make more sense once we add in that overlap check. All right, so with our container created, uh, what we're going to go ahead and do now is we're going to go ahead and create our sprites to go ahead and place inside our container. So let's jump down to our create sprites method. And the first thing we'll do is we'll create our starting and our ending sprites. And so let's make a new variable. We'll do const. We'll do our start sprite. We're going to set that equal to our scene. We're going to go ahead and do add. We'll do sprite. Now for our position, we're going to go ahead and do 0, 0. So we'll use our container's relative position to place it to the far left. And then for our texture, uh, we're going to go ahead and use our belt uh, sprite sheet. And we want our first frame, so we'll do 0. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and update our origin to go ahead and be 0. So in that way, it's in the top left-hand corner. And we're going to go ahead and play our belt left animation. And then what we'll do is let's go ahead and do our end sprite. And so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy this line of code. We're going to go ahead and paste it. We're just going to update our variable name, the end sprite. Now for this position, we want to go ahead and move all the way over to the right. So we're going to, go ahead and do 320 pixels for our X. We'll keep our same X position. But then for our frame, we want to go ahead and use frame eight. And now we want to go ahead and update our animation to go ahead and be right. So that way we have the right animation playing. And now we need to go ahead and add these to our container. So we're going to reference our bell container. We're going to use our add method. And then we can add multiple objects if we provide an array. And so we'll have our start sprite. And then we'll have our end sprite. So now if we go ahead and save, we should see our two game objects added to our container. And now we just need to go ahead and fill in our middle. 
All right, so for creating our middle game object, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and use a tile sprite. And what a tile sprite is, is it is a basic game object where we can provide a simple texture. And then Phaser will go ahead and repeat that texture to go ahead and fill in the width and the height that we specify that game object. And so we'll go ahead and automatically repeat that texture for us. And we don't have to create a bunch of individual game objects. Instead, we can create one. And Phaser will use that same texture for all those game objects. All right, so to go ahead and do this, we're going to go ahead and store this. And we're going to go ahead and store our reference on this mid tile sprite here. So what we'll do is we'll do this. We'll do our mid tile sprite. And we're going to set that equal to our scene. We want to do add. And we want to go ahead and do tile sprite. And so for our tile sprite, we need to move over 32 pixels. So then that way it's aligned with our left game object here. For Y, we'll do zero. And now we need to specify our width and our height. And so for our width, all we're going to do is we know our size is going to be 352 pixels. We just need to go ahead and subtract 32 times 2 because that'll be our left and our right pieces. And so for that value, we'll have 288. And then we know our height will be 32 because that's the size of our sprite that we're using. Then we need to go ahead and provide our texture. So this will also be built. And then for our frame, we want to go ahead and do four. And then we're going to go ahead and update our origin and we're going to go ahead and do zero. And then what we need to do is we actually need to pass that into our container so then that was positioned properly. All right, if we go ahead and save and take a look at our scene, we should see that we have our full conveyor belt added. However, our middle section is not animated. And the reason for that is your tile sprites don't actually have any methods or properties to allow them to be animated. And so to do this, what we can do is we can use the set frame method to manually animate our sprite automatically. And to do this, we can create a hidden sprite that will have the frame that we need to reference for our animation. And so back in our code, this is why we created this additional property here for this mid sprite. So how this is going to work is we're going to add one more sprite game object to our scene and we're going to go ahead and hide it so it's not visible to the player. And then what we'll do is in our update method for our scene, we're going to go ahead and use that as a trigger to update our frame for our tile sprite. All right, and so to go ahead and do that, the first thing we need to do is create that sprite. So let's copy this line of code here. I'm just going to go ahead and paste it. We're going to go ahead and update our reference. So instead of a new variable, we're just going to do this and our mid sprite. So we want to go ahead and move it over 32 uh, so it's in the right position. And we're going to go ahead and call set visible. And we want to go ahead and set this to false. So then finally, what we want to go ahead and do is we want to update this to be built and we want our mid animation and then what we'll do is we're just going to also add this to our container uh, so that way it's in the right position and we'll go ahead and save so now to get the animation effect we're looking for what we need to do is come to our main.ts file and inside our code here we already have our update function for our game scene and it's calling our player update method what we need to do is add an update method to our belt that's going to do the logic we want. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to call that method. So we're going to do this belt and we'll do update. Then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and jump back to our class. Uh, we'll go ahead and add that method now. And so we're just going to do public. We'll do update. Uh, we're not going to return anything. So it's going to be void. And now what we want to do is we want to reference our mid tile sprite. We're going to call that set frame method. And now to get the frame that we want to set, we're just going to go ahead and reference our mid sprite. We're going to grab the frame from there and we'll grab the frame name. So then that way we have the actual frame that we want. Now, if we're going to take a look at our scene, we can see our whole conveyor belt is actually animated. All right, so now that we have our logic in place for actually showing our game objects, the next thing we want to do is actually add in our collider. And so what we need to do is we need to add a collider that's going to tell us if our player game object is actually overlapping with our conveyor belt. And to do this check, we're going to go ahead and come into our player class. And up in our constructor, there's a to do where we want to add this code. And so what an overlap does is it basically creates a check between our physic bodies here. And so these pink bounding boxes here, when we have our debug enabled, if those two boxes overlap at all, this will actually trigger a callback that we can provide uh, when we add this collider. And so to do this, we just need to reference our scene. We want to go ahead and reference our physics plugin. We'll use our add method, and then we want to go ahead and add an overlap. And so to create the collider, we need to specify the two objects that we want to check for collisions with. And so this is going to be our player. So we're going to reference our sprite game object on our player. And then we've already provided a reference to our belt. And so from our belt, we want to go ahead and grab our container. 
And so right now this isn't exposed on our class and we'll go ahead and add that in a second. And so after we provide our two objects, we can do an optional callback. And so inside this callback, this is where we'll add in our logic for we can modify our player's speed. So for the time being, I'm just going to do a console log. I'm just going to do overlap uh, so we can see something happening. So then what we'll do is we'll jump back to our belt class and we're going to go ahead and add a getter to go ahead and grab that container. So we'll do get, we'll do container. And so this will be a phaser game objects container for our type. And we're just going to return this, our belt sprite container. All right, so we're going to test our code. Let's come over to our game scene. And so go ahead and move our player. As soon as our player touches our conveyor belt, we can see our console log is now firing. And so while they are overlapping, every update or tick to our game loop, we're going to go ahead and trigger this callback. And so then if we leave our conveyor belt, we'll see our callback is no longer invoked. And so now we can see that our collision is working how we expect it to. All right, so now we know that our logic is working. What we need to do is when our player does overlap with our conveyor belt, we need to modify the player's velocity. All right, so to go ahead and do this, uh, what we can do is we can modify our sprite game object's body's positioning. And if we go ahead and apply a new position to it, it will allow us to affect the overall velocity of when our player is actually moving around our scene. And so instead of just having our static value that we have when we go left and right, uh, we can make that dynamic based on uh, some type of position that we apply to it. And so to do this, what we'll do is inside our belt class, we're going to go ahead and create this new position. And so this is going to be a vector two uh, because it has an X and Y value. Uh, but the only value we really care about is going to be the X value. We're not actually going to modify the Y. And so to store this vector two, we'll make a new property. And we're going to call this surface speed. And for this, this is going to be phaser math. And we're going to do vector two. Then down what we'll do is in our constructor, we're just going to do this. We'll reference our surface speed will be equal to new phaser math vector two. And we're just going to go ahead and do 0 0.8 for our X value and we'll do zero for our Y value. And so depending on the values we set here, this is going to affect the overall uh, velocity of our player. And so the more we apply here, either the faster or slower the player will move depending on their direction that they're moving. So with our surface speed, we just need to expose a way for us to reference that in our player class. So we'll just add another getter. So we're going to do get speed and this will be our phaser math two math uh, vector two will return this surface speed. So now back in our player class, uh, in our overlap, what we'll just need to do is we just need to reference our sprite. We're gonna reference our body, reference our body's position, and we're gonna go ahead and add a new vector two to it. And so for this, we'll just do our belt and we're gonna go ahead and grab our vector two from our speed property. All right, so if we come back to our scene, we should be able to test. And so now we'll see when our player gets onto our conveyor belt, if we stop our input, we automatically move our player on the conveyor belt. And if we move against it, we can see our player is slower than when they're moving uh, normally on the regular floor. Finally, if they are moving with the conveyor belt, we're boosting the player's speed. And so if we want to see a more uh, extreme example, let's say we just go ahead and bump this up to two. We can go ahead and save, we come back to our scene. If we try moving, we can now see our players really fast and they cannot actually, they try to move against the conveyor belt, but they're not fast enough to actually run against it. And so we can see here, uh, depending on the value here, it's going to go ahead and modify uh, how, mo how fast or how slow that player will actually move. All right, with that, that actually brings this video to an end. Uh, so as we saw, just by using some of the built-in Phaser 3 game objects for our sprites and tile sprites, adding in those animations and using our built-in physics, we can create really cool uh, game objects in our game, uh, like this conveyor belt here. Uh, so as a reminder, there is a link in the description of the video to the clear source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please send the links on your screen now.